I'm in the Gospel of John tonight. And I'm going to work with these first 18 verses. And we're going to walk here together. We're going to culminate around verse 15, 16, somewhere in there. The first day of the week, Sunday, comes Mary Magdalene early. Somebody say Sunday Sunday. keeps coming. coming. Here comes Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark into the sepulcher. And we understand that's probably about 5 a.m. And she sees the stone taken away from the sepulcher. 5 a.m. Which meant she probably couldn't sleep. I'm going to really teach tonight because I'm starting at the first verse and I I had no no plans on even uh, exegeting this verse, but I see something in it. Do we all have this in common? Every time God does something is moving in you. God always does it early in the morning. In other words, for those of you all who have not come into the spiritual discipline yet of knowing the early morning God, you are missing a dimension of dispensation. You are missing, uh, I'm gonna make that claim. I'm gonna make that claim. I'm gonna make that claim because we as in adulthood, you can't sleep through mornings. And, And you know, from our biological mothers and fathers, you can't sleep through mornings. For my business owners, you can't sleep through mornings. Huh? For for my students, uh, my academics, you can't sleep through mornings. Those of you who are getting your PhDs, you do you sleep through mornings? You are up all night and then you get you're right back up in the morning. Anybody who is about a responsible work. And I want you to understand that there is something sacred about the morning time. And that's why Mary Magdalene was showing up at the tomb. And I'm willing to say, and this is just Greg. This isn't, you know, Reverend Drumright, the pastor theologian. This is just me. This is for me. So maybe this is not for you. Maybe I'm just talking out loud for me. But what I believe is that she couldn't even sleep that night. (laughs) You know, uh, and and, because see, when you love somebody or you love something and it's in trouble, you're not getting no sleep that night. Am I telling the truth? Okay, my young people are saying that's real. Okay, so let me say that's real. All right. When you love something, you cannot. I don't care how tired you are. You literally have spiritual insomnia. And out of her love, she made her way back to the tomb. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. She seen that the stone had been taken away. And she ran away to to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, from a theological perspective, we understand, I'm sorry, from a historical perspective, we know this is why you look into the other gospels to understand the other gospels. Okay? We know that this was John. She ran to John. Didn't name him, but we know based on the Mathenian account, the Lucan account, uh, we understand the Markian account, and now the Johannine account. When you study those together, and those of y'all who are interested in that study, then go ahead and do it. And if it fascinates you, then go ahead and f- find a divinity school. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I ended up going to divinity school uh, because I love the word of God and I love preaching the word of God. And, and why would I love doing it and not want to be a professional? And I'm, you know, so, um, you know, all of you intellectuals are saying, well, divinity school don't make you a professional. Literally, what I'm saying is that it makes me a learned practitioner. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so after 14 years of pastoral ministry, amen, I went to divinity school. Um, and let me say to you, I went to Wake Forest Divinity School. Shout out to my Wake Forest Divinity family. And I would recommend Wake Forest Divinity School to anybody. Not the only good school, but it is. 
excellent place. Um, <clears throat> she ran and came to Simon Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, and that would be John, and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. We know not where they have laid him. We know not where they have laid him. I'm hinged right there because I'm seeing into this verse. Tori, I'm seeing into that that they should have known not to look for his body. They were obsessed with finding the body. But remember, Jesus said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll build it again in so many ways throughout the Gospels. He said it. Verse three, Peter, therefore, went forth and that other disciple who was that John and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter. I love that. <laughs> I love that. The other disciple did outrun Peter. And, and I got excited when I rediscovered that. I, I had forgot that, that it said that. And I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a message right there. That's a message right there. Woo! I, I mean, I, I was really caught up right there. You know, I had all these sermon titles in my mind, ran this race. And then in verse 5, it says, and he, who was he? John. John, stooping down, looked inside, saw the linen, and went not in. And then I said, oh, shoot, I can't preach it now. He ran all the way there and couldn't go in. <laughs> you ran the race, but you forfeited the crown. I said, I can't preach it like I thought I could. I was ready to lift up John. I'm not tearing him down tonight. But why would you run the race, John, and then let Peter beat you inside? Oh, that's good. God Almighty. My God. Some of you are, are, are going to run the race and you're going to run it and you're going to be first. But you're not going to cross the finish line. To everybody that's thinking about giving up, hear ye, hear ye, and you got to be careful because you don't know where your where your finish is. So while you're thinking about quitting, you could be closer than you realize. I want to tell everybody right now: get back in the race, and for everybody that was a front runner, get your place back. Get your place back. Y'all right here in the studio with me. Tell them, get your place back. Why in the world would you run the race and forfeit the crown? And you got to understand, remember, she came at 5 a.m. And what I understand about astronomy is that the darkest part of night is just before dawn. Huh? I don't know who needs to hear this, but I hear the Lord reminding me of this to tell somebody out there. Yes, yes, you are legitimately going through real darkness. But you got to understand that that utter darkness is an indicator that you're almost at dawn. For those of you all who are literally saying in your prayers, it can't get any worse. That's good timing. That's a good place for you to actually push and not fold because if you've got to the darkest part of your night that means you're about at 5 a.m because at 6 30 at 6 a.m 5 30 a.m the sun is about to come up i want you right now to keep on running i want you to stay in the race i want you to dare to keep moving forward you're almost at your turning point weeping may endure 
And for some of us, yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to the whole night. And what we don't understand is that we can run all the way there. We can be others to it. And get right to the point where revelation is. Right to the reveal. And actually not cross the finish line. John, I really wanted to lift you up, but brother, I don't understand why you would beat Peter there and not go in to see the revelation. I hope somebody is, is getting strength. Hope somebody, if that means I just got to break this up into two parts, I don't want to keep teaching and you not get everything you can get out of this. Receive strength from God right now. Receive strength. Everybody who's dealing with darkness, receive strength. Everybody who's, 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 you know, has lost their place. I want you to, I want you to understand that this message and, and our interaction right now, that's right. Your tears right now and, and my testimony right now is coupling for your victory. Yeah, yeah, it's combining right now. It's, it's, it's coming together because God is going to hold you together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've been in that dark place. I said, I've been in that dark place. I know what utter darkness is. I know as a person of the light, I know what it feels like to want to be up at night and sleep in the daytime. Hallelujah. Because when demons try to come in and take over you, they want you to abide in darkness and they want you to hide from the light. And I come to tell you, just like I had to, you can. You can get your place back. Yep, 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 you can get your place back to every minister. I had a minister, you know, hesitate last week when I asked him to do something. You really want me to do it? Yes, I really want you to do it because I want you to have your place back. Huh? But see, this ain't about, this ain't about your ego. This ain't about, this ain't about making you feel good. This is about your living. Many are called, few are chosen. If you have been chosen, let me tell you, you're going through a darker darkness. Huh? Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh yes, right there. To my sick ministers, to my sick pastors, to my sick laborers, I want you right now to just believe and I'm going to be your strength. You're going to get your place back. Atamashaya. Yes, I have to administer faith. I have to administer faith. You know, and everybody's talking about the pastors that went on and died anyway from COVID. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. Either way, you're going to come out on top. So you might as well die on victory side and you might as well endeavor to live on victory side. And because you can't praise them, if you're laying on a bed of affliction, I'm going to, y'all get up, get up, stand up. We're going to stand up for you and we're going to put you on our mind and we're going to stand in this sanctuary and we're going to bless God for everybody that's on a sick bed. You bless God with a little bit of strength that you might have and I'm going to give God more strength. The Bible says that the strong belly infirmities of the weak. If I was sick, when I am sick, I would want somebody to be giving God glory on my behalf in my proxy. Hallelujah! Glory! 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 God, I bless you! Glory to God! This is for strength! Hallelujah! This is for rehabilitation! This is for healing! This is for restoration! This is for restoration! Oh my God! Be not weary! Be not weary! Be not weary! I believe God! And so shall it be! Huh? You're gonna finish this! You're gonna finish this! You're gonna finish this! You're going to finish this. I want you to understand. Hallelujah. For everybody who's trying to throw dirt on these ministry leaders that have lost the trend. I don't even want to call it a loss. You know, people making articles. Look at all the pastors that's died. All the bishops that's died from COVID. Let me tell you something. They finished that race. And now, therefore, there is a crown of righteousness. Y'all ain't sick. <laughs> they didn't lose. They didn't lose. We're still here with COVID. They're, they're resting. They're resting. And that's why I'm telling the church, don't you dare participate. 
and that you you speak life over their legacies in Jesus name there's a distant deliverance happening right now yeah 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 move your legs yeah somebody ain't even been able to move their legs I heard the Holy Spirit just pulling on me somebody hasn't been able to roll over in a few days go ahead on just even if, just 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 move in the direction Oh Manashaya. There's a there's there's a Namasha. There's an anointing that's going forth. And some of you all don't believe in healing. But I come to tell you, Christ is a healer. There's power in the blood. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Ah! seat and I heard the Lord say I'm not finished yet go ahead on go ahead on right there right there go ahead on I'm picking somebody up in the spirit go ahead on. you go ahead oh Jesus yes God there's a miracle happening right now right now breathe Lord, I pray right now that this word will open somebody's lungs. I hear the Lord say the word is opening somebody's breathing passage. Yes, 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 yes. The Lord said there's two types of healing going on right now. God said the first is a physical healing. God literally showed me that there are people that are having hard time breathing. May be COVID related, may not be COVID related. It may be emphysema. I'm calling out emphysema. I'm calling out bronchitis. I'm calling out influenza. But I hear the Holy Spirit going in and literally beginning to open up your lungs. That's the first miracle. I tell them, oh, shot. And the second miracle, the Lord says somebody else has been having anxiety attacks. The devil, the enemy has been standing on your chest trying to shut your lungs down. The anxiety attacks are going to cease. I hear the Holy Spirit saying to me tonight in this virtual experience, breathe again. the father one for the son one for the holy spirit and every demon that has been challenging your health and your mind your bodily health your your physical health and your mental health i command you to be delivered go back to hell every evil spirit is vacated your presence and your body every demon every curse every witch lie back to hell right now Amen. Amen. my god look like every time i try to behave god leads me in another direction but have your way holy spirit somebody say have your way somebody that can't get to your relatives right now just go ahead and put a worship in for them. Say, Lord, have your way. You are going to have to tell somebody to watch this again. Because somebody is going to get a healing in the rebroadcast of it. Have your way, Jesus. God move in the sick room. Yeah. Oh, God move in the counseling room. The Holy Spirit is counseling somebody right now. God said, give me, come on, give me that anxiety. Give it to me. Give it to me. Not me, God. Give it to, come on, give it. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. I'm going to give you some practical advice. There's a song that 
evangelist Beverly Crawford, Pastor Beverly Crawford sings. She says, give it to Jesus. Old school song. This is way back in her Bobby Jones days. When I finish with this broadcast, or if you're listening to this after the fact, not live, I want you, glory to God, after the word has gone out, I want you to begin to listen to that broad. I want you to listen to that song. Pull that up on YouTube. Give it to Jesus. Because I hear the Lord saying right now, give it to me. 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 Y'all tell me shy. Give me the anguish. Give me the anguish. You know, the enemy wants you to hold on to it. That's why I'm trying to say it like two dozen times. Give it to me. Give it to me. This is the voice of the Lord. Give it to me. Sometimes people, hurt people want to stay hurt. And I declare before God that you, you don't you dare go down tonight. Don't you go another day if you got another day to go without being delivered. Give it to me. Give it to me. I'm going to say something that may sound abusive to people who are easily offended, but I got to say what the Holy Spirit said. Get out of it. Come out of it. Get out of it. Come out of it. Get out of it. Come out of it. Give it to me. Don't you dare run the race and get all the way and not be able to get to the reveal. Don't you dare run that race and not cross the finish line. I anoint you to keep moving. I anoint your feet to keep running. Don't walk. It's time to run. Somebody is running back to the Lord. Somebody is coming back to God right now. Give it to me. Oh, give it to me. That's the, the say of the Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jesus. Yes, Lord. He'll take the pain away. I know. Take the pain. Yes, he will. Away. Give, give you some more practical advice. Go listen to that. That's Kirk Franklin, God's property. This is back in the 90s. He'll take the pain away. Give it to me. Give it to me. I heard somebody say right now, he's a healer. You can't holler like that if you ain't never been healed. And I'm telling you right now, God is a healer. I'm telling you right now, God is a healer. I said right now, God is a healer. There was a time. Look, look at this hand. <laughs> this is my left hand. With my right hand, he. Do y'all remember that revelation? What? With, with my right, with my right hand, he what? Huh? With my right hand, he holds me, and with my left hand, he what? Huh? He leads you. This is my left. This is my left arm. My left hand. I lost all mobility in this arm one time, just out of nowhere. Can't tell you what happened. The doctor couldn't tell me it was a nerve or a, a, a muscle that got pulled. I just left off. The, the, so look, every time I lift this hand. This is me saying he's a healer. Hey! 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 He can do it. My God, I feel the Holy Spirit welling up inside of me that I ain't felt in a while now. He can do it. Yeah, Jesus. Yes, he can. I know he can. I know he can. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm just giving somebody time because they, they still trying to work with their faith. Come on. Come on. Give it to me. The say of the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I really, I really do have a word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Namashaya. Glory to God. Please be seated. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, God. In verse 5, John stooped down and looked in and saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he went not in. And so Peter came behind him and went in. And saw the linen clothes lying there and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Why would the gospel give us so much insight into just the very location of Christ's death garments? 
I want you to understand that I believe that this was deliberate. I, it was deliberate for them to go into so much detail because it's the actions that were taken inside that tomb were deliberate. And if they were forensic investigators, they would have realized even right then at that moment, wait, he's not dead. <laughs> they would have realized that the body had not been stolen. Huh? Because anybody who comes in to steal the body, they're not going to roll the stone back go in and find the body wrapped in linen go in and find what this translation says the napkin <laughs> that was around his head praise the lord um they they're not going to go in and say okay let's fold a napkin let's fold a napkin up and let's put it right there and let's come on let's fold a linen hook you get that side can you imagine the linen you, you get that side come on come on folding the sheets together they're not and then come on let's lay that right there let's lay no man glory to god if people was in there still in the body then they would have wrapped, they would have took the body. You may, you may would have found the garments on the trail. Yeah. But I wouldn't have, but I don't even see how that could have been possible. Because why would I tote around an exposed body? Can you imagine with this kind of knowledge going in, seeing the napkin over there, seeing the linen over there, and walking around saying, Ah, oh, he's alive! <laughs> I'm serious. Can you imagine? Because I mean, when you think about it, like, wait a minute. I don't know where he at, but he out there somewhere. Come on. Come on. Come on. When, when they asked me, what, what is your title? I said, I don't know. I got three. I got three. I, I, I can't give you a title. And, and I'm going to stop trying to title my sermons now that we get a chance in virtual ministry to go back and put it on there when it's all said and done. Because every title that I've given over the last month hadn't been the final title. But if I could, if I could just preach that one singular scripture, I would, I would preach it from this thought. He's out there somewhere. <laughs> He's out there somewhere. <laughs> Y'all see what I see? I would I'm telling you right now, that was, that would have been the first shout right there. You know, and can you imagine John and Peter saying, what is she doing? What is she crazy? Yeah, she, she got good sense because she know good and well the way this scene looks. Death has been defeated. Oh, Jesus. Let me stop. Let me stop because I'm about to have church by myself. I'm about to have church. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. But just tell yourself, he's out there somewhere. Ah, uh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Somebody, come on, let's give God a he's still alive praise. Come on. That's, I just, I just had to. Amen. Amen. Sit, go ahead, sit on down. Sit on. He's still alive. He's still alive. Now y'all know if we was in in, in the Citadel, we'd be going crazy by now. Hallelujah. Sit down. 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 Y'all seen that meme I put up? That meme I put up. You know, you said you was gonna come by my church. Yeah, I drove by and I ain't hear no shouting music, so I kept going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Sit there, I miss you because you know house church is too quiet for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. But while I'm here, I might as well preach. Yes, sir. Well, all right, all right. Yep, 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 yep. Y'all too slow. Y'all too slow. <laughs> ah, he's out there. Hallelujah. Making his rounds. That's what he was doing. Hallelujah. Making his rounds. You know, it's probably it's a 
It's some more folk that need to be healed. Let me visit some more sick people here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? Down in hell. Running that revival. Talking to evil spirits. Letting them know I still got authority over you. Hey, Jesus. Sitting down there meeting with Judas. Hey, bro, what happened to you now? Now, look what you went and did. And even though I had to die, I believe Jesus was sitting in hell talking to Judas. And the first thing he says, you didn't have to die. I'm just happy tonight. Can you imagine that that's the conversation that Jesus and Judas had? You didn't have to die. I had to. You didn't have to. <laughs> I had already told you I was going to die. Now, why did you have to go and do that? Hallelujah. And I want to talk to every last one of my Judases. Why you got to go and do that? Why did you have to go and do that? Huh? Jesus died. You didn't have to do that. And now you suffering. And I've been asking the Lord. I've been praying for mercy. I, I don't I don't pray death on my haters. I don't I don't pray evil on my haters because that's a hateful spirit. And I'm not going to let my haters make me hateful. I might need to do a daily bread on that right there. Don't let your haters make you hate. I've been praying that God will love you. I've been praying that God will wrap God's arms around you. I've been praying that the Holy Spirit will take authority over you. Glory to God. I've been praying that God will help you. And ultimately, I've been praying that God will save my haters. I'm already saved. No, you're not if you're speaking evil. No, you're not if you're carrying lies. Glory to God. But I come to tell you right now, I know that Jesus got up from that grave and went straight to work. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll tell you that right now. There are 10 occasions in the Gospels, 10 occasions where we see the works of Jesus after resurrection and before ascension. There were 10, 10 occasions in the word of God. But I, I, I don't believe for one minute, Torin, that that was all of them. Yeah. You got to understand that for 40 days, okay, 40 days, Jesus came back and was roaming the earth. Yeah. All right. And 10 occasions. All right. And I pulled them up so that I could just share them with you. Mary Magdalene, when Jesus turned uh, to Mary in, in this account. All right. Um, the other women uh, that, where Jesus appeared in Matthew chapter 28, verse eight, he departed quickly from the tomb, went with fear and great joy. I'm sorry. They departed quickly. And behold, Jesus said unto them, hail and came up and took hold of his feet and worship him they did glory to God and Jesus said do not be afraid but go and tell my brethren go to Galilee that they there they will see me that happened in Matthew 28 the two disciples on the road to Emmaus he appeared to Saint Peter in Luke chapter 24 he appeared to the disciples without Thomas in Luke 24 he appeared to the disciples with Thomas um, in John chapter 20 uh, Jesus appeared and revealed himself to the seven disciples uh, by the Sea of Tiberias in John chapter 21. Glory to God. 5,000 disciples in, in uh, 1 Corinthians. Now we're outside the Gospels. Let me correct myself. Then he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time. So now he's running crusades. <laughs> and most of whom were still alive, though some had fallen asleep. What kind of meeting was that? He was preaching to the living and the dead. That's how you know he had to have some authority in hell. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. I said that's how you had to know that he had some authority in the afterlife. Yeah. Because he was preaching before he went back to a sin. He was preaching to both the living and the dead. I don't know if we'll ever see it like that again. Good God almighty. He appeared to James and then to all the apostles in first Corinthians. Glory to God. And in Luke chapter 24, right before the ascension, those were the 10 accounts that we know of. But you'd have to understand if you do eisegetical work, you'd have to know that it must be more times than that. Yeah. 
It must be more times than that. And so right here, we, 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 we're just seeing this, how this is unfolding, right? And the Bible says here that Mary stood at the sepulcher weeping. And she wept. This is where we get those old songs. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. This is it right here. Tell Martha not to mourn. <laughs> As she wept, she stooped down and looked into it. And now, look what she's seen. Two heavenly bodies. Two angels in white. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to start right there and give you some practical advice. It's crazy to me, Sister Jazz. You know, some of you all know now that we, I did a baptism on, on Saturday. Um, and, and generally we bring out our white, white, our total white um, in the spring and summer. And we started with Resurrection Weekend. How in the world church folks don't have white? <clears throat> Somebody said, Pastor, I can't, I can't go help you because I ain't got white. And I don't even remember who it is, so I ain't trying to come for nobody. But I, l- let me just correct you. I ain't going to come for you. I'm going to correct you. Would that, that work, Sister Boy? I ain't going to come for you, but I'm going to correct you. Whoever you are, how you got black and don't have white? In the choir singing songs, we're going to wear a white robe. Tell me, I shall wear a crown. No, you're not. You ain't got, you ain't even got white. Huh? I, I don't care. I don't. I didn't say what it had to be. I don't care if you come to church in white jeans and Jordans. Go find you some white Jordans. I got white Jordans on tonight. Go find you some white Jordans. Let me tell you something. I got white jeans. I got white Jordans. I got white Air Maxes. I got white um uh phone pop. Look, I got white. Do you hear me? I got white church shoes. You know. You know. We don't call it dress shoes. You know. If you're a church baby, you call them church shoes. <laughs> Which is real stupid because like, you know, like you only wear them like the box say church shoes. <laughs> like the section in the store says church shoes. <laughs> They're dress shoes. I got white church shoes. Huh? I got white slacks. I got white suit. I got white jackets. I got white blazers. I mean, the only thing black on me when I wear white is my underwear. So you can't see my departments. Do you hear what I'm saying? How do you not have white and you call yourself a believer? How are we going to walk in the light and we don't have white? I don't understand it. White should be an essential garment. Citadel, don't you let the next uh, opportunity for us to wear white corporately together and you not have some. I remember um, when I was growing up, my mama used to run and get white stockings before first Sunday. We got to, we late to church because she got to go and stop at the convenience store to get some white stock. You know what I'm saying? They want their legs to be white. My God. You know those stockings that make all that noise? It be praising them and sound like a sandboard. All right, all right, all right. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Hallelujah. That's just like God. Worshiping, shouting, now we laughing. Huh? That's just like God. Because everybody who just got their healing, now you're getting ready to get your joy back. What kind of preacher is he? One minute he he worshiping, now he laughing and making jokes. It's not jokes, it's called joy. Ah! Y'all ain't saying nothing. The word of God says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Laughter worketh like a medicine. Go ahead and take this dose. Go ahead. Here's your medicine for tonight. My Lord. Mary. Look in and seen angels. The one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. Good God almighty. (laughs) In other words, not there in the body, but there in spirit. This is fascinating to me. I mean, I don't I don't know what the revelation of it is, but even though his body was not there, the place where he laid was still anointed. My goodness. And that's why, you know, it's important 
for you to, for all of you all, you world travelers, don't be so quick to go to the Bahamas and not make it to the Holy Land. I mean, if you're going to be faithful, then be about the faith. Yeah. You know, don't 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 hide your bucket list to make it to Australia and, and you ain't even been to the Holy Land. Yeah. <laughs> As believers, sometimes we don't even understand how even just going and just being where Jesus was is a ministry in and of itself. Yeah. 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 What if those what if those angels are still right there? Hey man, last year I had a chance to go to the Holy Land and, and you know, I, I, he can say that because he been. Well, you know, it took a while for me to get there, but I knew I was going. Yeah. And for all of you all, don't have a passport, don't, got, don't have the money right now, at least tell God I'm going to make it. Right. Yeah. At least put it in your heart. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. More people want to go to Africa than they want to go to the Holy Land. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, yay, I'm black. You know what I'm saying? I'm down for it. I'm with it. But I promise you, the motherland is not the holy land. Yeah. And if there were angels, Minister Richards, where the body of Jesus laid, how do I not know that there are angels in the body, in the Garden of Gethsemane right now? Yeah. Hallelujah. How, how do I not know that? How do I know that they're not angels? Glory to God, where Calvary was. We, you know, we, we, we believe we got there to that place. We believe we got there to where we believe the tomb was. I literally was able to put my head and look around and see where we believe the tomb is. And I'm saying we could have got it wrong. But all I'm saying is one thing was for sure in the midst of all of our believing, we were right where Jesus was. Yeah, and I've been to Africa. You hear what I'm saying? And I want to lead some people back to Jerusalem. And I want to lead you to Africa as well. Understand right now that there is an anointing right where Jesus was. And they said unto her, woman, why do you weep? Now she's coming into a conversation with the angels. And she said unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. And if I was going to preach from this perspective, uh, particular pericope I would entitle this sermon he's my lord yes. 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 just straight old school yes. he's my lord I love it I love it because what she did was she didn't say they took away Jesus mm -hmm. yeah. she didn't say they took away uh, 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 Yahweh yeah. she, didn't, she didn't say they took my rabbi mm -hmm. she said they took away my lord Oh my goodness. Yeah. He's my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> In other words, it was personal to her yeah. that his body wasn't there. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if any of you all like got that, but that does something for me. Because we sit here and we, we, you know, we come into church and we see communion and we take communion, you know, we throw the bread back and complain about how dry it is, you know, and we throw the juice back and complain about how much more we need. And we don't even understand how personal that moment should be. I want you to understand how personal this was that his body was not there. Somebody say he's my Lord. And, and listen, those of us who are uh, faithful to the institution of church, we must not be more faithful to that institution than we are to the Christ who is in the center of it, at the center of it. You got to be faithful to God. You got to be faithful to the Lord of the institution. And you got to understand that you can't be more tied. And we know this now. We was preaching this before, but now we know it. You cannot be more faithful to the building than you are to the body yeah. Yeah. come on somebody say it with me he is, he is my, lord. my lord where have you taken my lord Jesus. Mm. she was obsessing over his location my God. which is a good thing when you love somebody you want to have, you want to see them be buried properly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Huh? Yes. When you love somebody, you, you don't want to, you don't want their bodies to be up in a borrowed tomb forever. Let me take you where you belong. Let, you didn't even, they, what, what are they doing with this body? You, when you love somebody, you don't want to know that their body is sitting up in a tractor trailer hooked up to a refrigerator. I want to go claim the body. Where is yeah, so good. my love I'm my lord good. Mm. Good. and when she 
had, when she had thus said, she turned back and she saw Jesus and knew not that it was Jesus. <laughs> Woo. You know, this is where I sit and wonder, how is it that he was unrecognizable? I mean, can, can, can I just frolic in that in, in chapter in verse 14? Can I can I just frolic right there for a moment? How is it that he was unrecognizable? You said, my Lord, and now he's there. And now you don't understand it's him. <laughs> I'm not crafting out a criticism of Mary. I think that perhaps it was so unbelievable that she couldn't believe it. <laughs> you know, that it was that that moment was so captivating. It, she was all struck like, you know, it's 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 almost like. Um, and, and this does not come close to a proper analogy, but for for um, for for just goodness sake, let me just it's like when those soldiers come home to surprise their children mm -hmm. and it takes their child a moment mm -hmm. like that ain't what. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, it is amazing. It is amazing that. She could actually see, see the tomb empty, run back, go get them, come back. And that time they not stay. Yeah. Because as, uh, as, as we have noted in verse 10, Jasmine, what did it say? The disciples went away again. Mm. I guess, you know, it was more important stuff to do back at home. Oh my goodness. Oh, boy, I'm gonna tell you right now, I gotta talk. I gotta talk. Peter, Peter, if you can hear me, I gotta talk. <laughs> I mean, we 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 bro, we got to have a conversation. And so ain't no confusion in heaven, so I need to work out my anger with you right now. Where was you at, bro? How could you miss it and then miss it again? I mean, what does this say about the dedication? Mm. No, I got one better than that, Dre. What does this say about their loyalty? I got faithful members, but everybody's not loyal saints. Glory to God. I don't really do this too much, but I'm going to take my liberty and do it tonight. Chris Brown said it best. These saints ain't loyal. If I, if I was going to preach from verse 10, I would preach that all the way down. Ah, these saints ain't loyal. Oh Went away again. Oh, yeah. I know. I know what Chris Brown said. I'm too. <laughs> huh? So long, so. I'm. I'm. You know. I, I'm. I'm kind of frustrated. I'm. I'm. I'm bothered by this. You know. I'm. I'm in a quandary. Yeah. I'm. I'm literally in a theological quandary right now. If you missed it the first time, how do you come back and like, whoa? Whoa, look around. Whoa, it, what? The, the head wrap is right there. Whoa, wait. Wow. Okay, hold on. We got we to gotta figure this out. We got to figure this out. You know, Mary was the first one who made it. Like, we, we got we to gotta work this out. Like, whew. how did you miss it again? I know how. I know how. Because I got sons and daughters that will come and get the deliverance of their lifetime. They will come and get free. They will come. Chains will fall off. I'm telling you, demons cast out of you. Um, I'm telling you, in the, in, in the days after that, life, victory, hope will come over you. It will greet you. People will have amazing testimonies. I mean, people have, will come and get healed from all types of sicknesses in their body. They will come and get their mind back. And then after 14 days, in some cases, the very next day, they don't even know if they're going to come back to church. 
You know, people will come and, and they will receive the impartation of God. I don't even want to call it prophecy, man. I just Because that word is just so overused. And in some cases, that word is so overrated. I believe in the power of prophecy. However, amen, I don't want that to be a buzzword to your future. What should be a buzzword to your future is deliverance. Yeah. They will come and receive powerful, powerful uh, uh, impartation from the Lord. And then in two days, they're back to their old ways. Amen. I'm struggling with this, but I know this struggle. I know this struggle. The disciples was out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. And I'm saying that to my Citadel family. I've been telling you all that since we have gone, had to go virtual with this ministry. I dare not be an out of sight, out of mind pastor. Every day, my mind is mulling over my sheep. Every day, I'm thinking and praying. Stop thinking it because I don't pick up my phone and text you. Stop thinking because I don't run and chase your email back with a response as soon as you think I should get it. Stop thinking that I don't care for you. I promise you, amen, if you are truly called to people, then you understand that people don't just jump on you and jump off of you. Yeah. If you got a pastor like that, then they shouldn't even be pastor and they call themselves. But I just want to know, how do we as followers of Jesus Christ, how can we be so here yeah. and then so distant? How can, how can we just have praise and worship? How can the praise and worship team be so enthralled in their singing and not as equally enthralled in their hearing? Yeah. How can they? Let me talk to my musician, you know, because people will literally come and play and pour all this energy into the music portion and literally have nothing to say and nothing to show in the preaching portion. Yes. You are bipolar in the spirit. Yes. And I don't speak that over anybody. I'm just calling it like I see it. Yes. That one minute you can be down and the next minute you can be distant. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's a demon in that. Yes, There's a spirit of disloyalty in that. My Lord. That's not truth. That's not truth. Let me yes. say yes. it. Yes. That is not the truth. Yes. When it's in you, it's in you. Mm. And you don't leave it. You don't put it down. You don't, you don't. Some have never been in church and the word was so good you can't even go to the bathroom. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My God, I'm going to broadcast that and not, but I'm just going to keep on reaching. Have you ever, have you have like, uh, and, and I'm going to set you straight. I'm going to set you straight right here and right now. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Are you ready for this? Because when you go to Beyonce concerts, you don't run to the bathroom then. Yeah. 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 Huh? When you go to Drake concerts, you know, you don't run, you don't run to the bathroom then. You don't even run to the concession stand. Right. Huh? When you go to them concerts, you bring your weed in with you because you're going to be in there for a while. Huh? When you go to them concerts, you already got your alcohol already right in your belly because you're going to be in there for a while. Y'all ain't saying nothing. In other words, how can you be so enthusiastic about being centered around the secular and be so distracted around the spiritual? Oh, my goodness. Let me stand up and deal with this devil. Let me stand up and deal with this demon. Glory to God. And I noticed this around everything that helps us. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Everything that helps us. We can literally sit in front of an Xbox. Mm. Yeah. We can literally sit in front of a PS4 for hours and not even go take a bath. And complain if we don't get a bathroom break in a two hour service. The devil is retarded. God ain't in that. God ain't in you. Huh? That we can show so much focus on our entertainment and literally can't even sit through a 45, 55 minute class without being distracted. Everything that helps us, we hinder the process. And everything that hurts us, we help it. Oh my God. That's real. That's real. 
I can't fuss when I get to heaven, so I'm going to holler at you now, bro. John, Peter, what was it? What was going on at home? What was going to happen? I know right now in, in the historical context, the cultural setting of this, the Passover was happening. But it ain't no Passover. If, if, if Jesus is alive, then all that right there, it, it don't matter no more. This, this, you got to get with this. Oh, God, I thank you right now. And, you know, it's interesting. People will literally get a job and can't come to Bible study. People will literally get a job and can't make it to church anymore. You are literally pulling away from your spiritual focus yeah. for a check. Don't you understand if the, Bible, the word of God says that favor is better than silver and gold? Yeah. What in the world is going on with your drive if you can't attend to destiny? Yeah. It's a setup. It's a setup. It's a setup. Just like the enemy keep working with our broadcast tonight. Keep computer just shut down out of nowhere. Keep messing up. We've been having continuous broadcasts and now all of a sudden we had to come back for a third time tonight. The enemy is trying to set you up. And that's something that I realized a long time ago. And I always tell people this. Don't be distracted by interruption. Yeah. Yes. You and I have to learn how not to be distracted by interruption. I learned that a long time ago. I learned that I consider it a gift. And that means if it's a gift, you can get it too, yeah. right? <laughs> that means you can get some of you are just like me. Everything I want, I get. Huh? Everything I want, I get. And so if you don't have the Holy Ghost, that means you don't desire it enough. Yeah, that's good. Because huh? I'm telling you right now, I'm spoiled in the spirit. I said I'm spoiled in the spirit everything I want I get it like I got to have it oh my god I cannot stay in this dark place I got to find peace <laughs> glory to God amen I can't stay in this low place I got to get a job I got to be a sower you said you give seed to the sower God you got to help me uh huh and so the first two job offers don't mess up my worship that ain't it that ain't it that's not the one because I, I, uh, I, I don't want that more than I need God. Yeah. I need a job so I can sow my seeds. Yeah. But I don't mess, want to mess around and be enthralled in sowing and I'm not growing. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's because you don't desire it enough. Because it's a gift. And some of us desire everything that we wanted until we got it. Huh? You wanted that pair of shoes and you eventually got it. Huh? You wanted that relationship and it's a shame. You eventually got it. Glory to God. It's funny how we want the stuff that hurt us and don't and want to keep the stuff at bay that we need. You remember when you was young, you didn't like socks and underwear. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. What's this? It's what you need. And that's what's happening right now with the world. They don't like the word. It's what you need. Huh? They love worship, but don't like the word. It's what you need. Do you know that people would be offended if they came to church and didn't hear the singing? Yeah. They would go crazy. They, are you saying I'm going crazy or they would go crazy? Amen. Because I'm going off. Okay. All right. They, they would literally be offended. <laughs> huh? But the worship ain't for you no way. That's unto God. And, and can I keep it 100? Can I keep it 100? I have, I have even struggled with including the worship in our online virtual broadcast. Because, because I'm, I'm just thinking to myself that if we're having so many problems with streaming and we're having so many problems with the, with the online airspace, I'm thinking to myself, the most important thing for people to have is the word. So maybe we should just come online and just give the word. You know what I'm saying? Thinking to myself that people can worship on their own. Huh? But you got so many people who are not worshipers. So they have to be entertained yeah. in the presence of God. People want some people won't even join your church if the music ain't all that. And that's coming from me, a musician and a worship leader. Yep, mm -hmm, got delivered from all of that. Delivered from thinking that that was the end all, be all to my relationship with God. 
You know, I, I mean, I even helped write a song one time. Music is my life. That ain't not, not no more. <laughs> not no more. Not no more. There's more to ministry than music. That's, there's more to ministry than music. And that's how I actually stumbled upon this ministry. Because when I began to realize that giving concerts here, there and everywhere, I realized that people need a word in between an A and a B. That if the B selection was really getting folks saved, then we don't need to go to the C selection. We need to come to the altar now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm afraid for all of my musicians. I'm afraid for you when you don't have a desire for the word. I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid for you because you're going to help us get to heaven and you make it to hell because you don't know the word of God. You are laboring in the musician's pit, but not laboring in the ministry. My God. Hallelujah. And there's a difference. And that's how sometimes we can be so gifted and so anointed and everything in our marriages and everything between our children and our friendships be failing because we got a gift for the world, but we don't have a gift to do our own work. My God. Hallelujah. And I'm bothered by this. I'm bothered by their disloyalty. And as a pastor, I'm bothered by the disloyalty of sometimes the parishioners. Come on, Citadel. Where you at? Where you at? I dare you better not be out of sight, out of mind. What are you doing, John? What are you doing, Peter? How do you leave the grave a second time? Realizing that something is going on. Yeah. Realizing that there is some there there. Yeah. You should have told your wives. You should have told your family. You should have told your household. Wait a minute. The work is still going on. Yeah. You, should have you should have been reminded that before you were an apostle, you were an armor bearer to Jesus. Yeah. You should have stayed there. And there are so many people that are serving senior servants they're faithful but not loyal yes. All right. yes. got too many amens in here tonight yes. but I'm going to tear it down they're faithful but they're not loyal there's a difference there's a difference glory to God the nights where I would stay all night with my pastors because they were sick stay all night in the hospital not because I was ass but because I refused to go anywhere and I'm even with my friends I do that right now what you go home I ain't going nowhere you got to understand because see when you want to get out of Dodge you never wanted to be there in the first place yeah. Yeah. and what God is trying to get out of us in this virtual experience is glory to God God is trying to tear down some of this face time ministry FaceTime ministry I almost show up and do my job how huh, but I can't wait to leave huh, FaceTime ministry y'all ain't saying nothing realizing that the enemy starts dodging and throwing attacks when the lights go off and when the music stop y'all ain't saying nothing to me Glory to God. That's when the enemy started launching his darts. I remember the very last service that we had physically all together. It was a mighty, mighty, mighty move of God. It was a Women's Day service. But you know, in our church, uh, everybody gets something on Women's Day. The men get something on Women's Day. I mean, the men was going in and the women. And hallelujah. And I, I, I mean, it was, a. am telling you, like a mighty rushing wind. The Holy Spirit came in. And immediately when the service wrapped, the devil just let me know, I'm in here too. Mm -hmm. Huh? Sometimes your, your biggest breakthrough is going to be met with, your, with the worst fight. Your biggest breakthrough is going to be your worst battle. Huh? Your biggest breakthrough is going to be your worst battle. And people, you know, are already mentally checking out. And that's what John and Peter did. I, I can see I'm not going to get to verse 16 tonight. Mm -hmm. Peter and John mentally checked out. Yeah. And I just want to rebuke that in, in, in all of us tonight. I want to rebuke that. I press my way through stopping and starting this broadcast to rebuke this demon and rebuke this devil. Like mentally checking out that they would go back home and just stay gone. Hallelujah. Leaving this woman. And I thank God for all of the women of the faith. I thank God for all of the matriarchs of the faith. I will never marginalize women in ministry because I can look in my word and I can see where Mary Magdalene had faith that the disciples didn't have. And as far as I'm concerned, she wasn't a disciple. 
as far as I'm concerned she was an apostle as far as I'm concerned this is where we learn our lessons the fact that they went back home and they left her there and that was the only reason why she was able to come into the presence of the holies of holy and behold the the the, the actual sight of two angels who were sitting there guarding an empty tomb and eventually turned around and had a conversation with her risen savior y'all ain't saying Woo, god i thank you right now that is why some people have and that's why we still have the have nots because everybody is not loyal unto the bitter end i said it everybody doesn't have that faith do you have that kind of faith loyal to the bitter end huh people right now that are grieving their leaders i pray for every church that you make it through this transition and i promise you right now there are people saying he ain't here i ain't gonna be here no more you and lord you could have left while your pastor was still alive how because you're not loyal to the bitter and that's the same mentality that these disciples had my god and i tear it down right now and even though she didn't even know what was happening because the real deal is that she was she was so enthralled with where his body was because she wanted to treat it right hallelujah she wanted to treat it right and that's why so many of our pastors are discouraged because they got help but it's still not the right treatment it's still not the right treatment that's that's why so many of our bishops are, are and our, our our teachers are so paranoid because they got help but it's not the right treatment amen the students complain about the work instead of saying give me more students don't even want to learn they in the classroom but don't want to learn she wanted to treat the body right she literally was looking for his body because i believe she wanted to embalm his body where is it where is it if you got it let me know if you got it let me know just let me know just tell me what's up you can hush it to me you can you can whisper it to me just tell me where his body is i want to make sure that we handle this the right way because who is that that is my lord so i he's my lord I told you I could have preached it from that he's my Lord it may not mean anything to you but it means something to me huh people talk and tear the church down glory to God it may not mean nothing to you but it means something to me yeah but you need to tell your story no I don't Jesus knows my story I don't need to tell every time something happened to me in church because the church it means something to me y'all ain't saying nothing to me glory to God I hurt when churches die even people that don't even like me, even pastors that that are, you know, that are literally, you know, haters. I, I hate it when I see them go through. Why? Because they're a part of the church and the church still means something to me. And I just believe that we have to be careful how we treat it if we say that we need it. We got to be careful how we treat it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got members that still ain't subscribed to our YouTube channel. How are how, we've been on virtual ministry for a whole month and you still can't figure out how to be faithful even from a distance? This is the easiest time to be a member of a church. God almighty, God almighty. This is it. This is the easiest time. I hope I'm getting more amens at home. Glory to God. This is the easiest time to be a member of a church. If you loyal, this is the easiest time where you can show it. All you got to do is pull up online. You ain't got to spend your gas money. You ain't got to spray no cologne. You ain't, you, I mean, you should, but you don't even have to brush your head, bro. All you got to do is pull up online. You're more faithful to Naruto and enemy than you are to the anointing of God and Jesus Christ you got a subscription with Netflix and haven't subscribed to the church Come on. Come on. Come on. what and what I thought you said that he was your Lord huh these say these saints ain't loyal come on huh these saints ain't loyal come on glory to God these these saints ain't loyal ain't loyal Huh? And you can be, and I'm gonna talk to the leaders. Come on, Lord. Huh? Come on, disciples. Yeah. Come on. Talk to the leaders. Yeah. 
Glory to God. If it wasn't for some of y'all positions, y'all wouldn't even be down either. Some of us are hiding behind our positions. Let us get set, sat down and I promise you, you'll be late to the broadcast. Huh? I'm telling you, your service don't save you. There are a few times in your Christian experience where your service has a, has a salvific impact. Those are hard times. Those are heavy times. Those are not times where you backslide. Yeah. Those are times where you're hurting, but you're still serving. Yeah. And sometimes in those times, not all the time, sometimes in those times, your service have a, has a salvific impact, yeah. but not an overarching impact. No, your service cannot ultimately save you. Right. You better not get to the gates right. and have the Lord open up that book of life and say, give an account for the fact that you never knew me. But wait, I was at church. I served. I, served, I preached. I served my pastor. I was there every time the doors was open. No, you wasn't. No, you were. Oh, you meant the physical doors. Oh, because when it was time to fast, you didn't participate in that. Huh? Oh, you meant the physical doors. Okay, because when your pastor was suffering, you was out partying. Oh, you meant the physical doors. That, that's what you meant. Huh? Glory to God. When folks was attacking the church, you was quiet. The physical doors. Yeah. The physical doors, you know, you posting everything but strength on your timeline. Glory to God. The physical doors. Every time the doors was open, I was there. Yeah. Making it hard. Yeah. They're causing problems. Yeah. They're looking and lurking. Yeah. They're still high. Yeah. They're still drunk. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Yeah. They're in the way every time it was open. Glory to God. Amen. When you know, if you are going to be a servant, you are going to have to bring some strength into this. Yeah. That's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking to everybody. I'm talking to everybody. You know, I don't want to sit there. Don't think I'm throwing off on my leaders. I'm talking to the whole church. Glory to God. And, I, you know, one thing I learned in, in this in this virtual ministry, if you're not shouting on your live, you don't get hundreds of viewers. You know, but I'm gonna tell you right now for everybody who's still hanging on, it's the word that's gonna save you. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. And so I'm talking to the entire church. If you are not, if you are a leader, if you're not bringing strength to it, you got to understand you at some point, you got to stop backsliding. You got to stop hating. You got to stop being jealous of your pastor. You got to stop trying to sleep with all the women in the church. You got to stop trying to get with all the men, all that male adjectives. You got to stop that foolishness and you got to become an asset to ministry and not a liability. The people around my senior the people around our senior servants they need to know that you are saved the people that serve the senior servants they need to know pastor don't play and neither do I I failed no you didn't you poured oil on the floor and you use your position in ministry oh my god to be manipulative I bind the devil I bind it up right now in the name of Jesus Amen. glory to God here were many are the afflictions of the righteous your affliction should be met with loyalty Amen. huh when that demon come over you I want them to find a rock solid iron clad servant oh no oh no you thought I was going to play Oh no, oh no, you thought you was going to slide in my DMs You wouldn't say it in front of pastor Don't say it in my inbox Help me Holy Spirit on tonight I know why the devil tried to shut down my broadcast tonight Because there's some deliverance in my mouth On tonight Hallelujah, get free Stop playing you better use this opportunity to really be saved. You better use this opportunity to get a distant deliverance. You better use this opportunity to get your mind right. Because let me tell you what I'm praying. And I'm convinced there are some other senior servants that are praying this prayer as well. God, when we get all back together, I want you to make sure that we are free of mess. And when we all get back together, no, not everybody can come back. When we all get back together, because I don't want every demon back. I'm trying to pray.
preach to every demonic spirit. I'm trying to preach to every holy hater. I'm trying to preach to every instigator. I'm trying to preach to all my unloyal saints. Why are you in your own home? So that you can understand that when you come back to the church house, you cannot come back the same way. You better come back better. You better come back stronger. You better come back wiser. Huh? Somebody say, I'm better. I'm stronger. I'm wiser. If you're still up to those same antics, still telling them same lies. Oh, Pastor, I was on live. No, you wasn't. You was on replay. Huh? Came on and went to sleep. Huh? Huh? Oh, somebody came over. Oh, they didn't know you watched preaching. Huh? They, they didn't want to watch Citadel and chill. They wanted to watch Netflix and chill. They didn't want to do Corona with Christ. Huh? They were in quarantine and they were looking for quarantine. Huh? Y'all remember Pootie Tang? They was looking for quarantine. How they looking for all the foolishness in you? What you doing? Oh, I'm watching my pastor preach. I'm gonna tell you right now that'll 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 mess up. That'll kill the whole vibe. That'll kill the whole vibe. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, I'm trying to slide through. Oh, come on over. Come on over. I come in and see the service going on. I kill the whole vibe. You'll find out what they're there for then. I just came by to see about you. No, you didn't. Because now you're trying to leave. Huh? Because I'm, I'm at church right now. Huh? I got all my clothes on right now. <laughs> huh? I'm fully dressed. I ain't, in my, I ain't in my little boy shorts and my little house. Oh, talk back to me through that camera tonight. Because I come with a word of deliverance in my mouth tonight. Huh? Come on, sit down. What's happening? Pastor preaching. You remember I've been trying to get you to go to church for a while now. My, 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 my. We're going to kill that vibe because that vibe is killing your victory. My God, my God, my God. I see you. I see you. I, I see Sister Taylor. I see you screaming at me, girl. Go ahead on. We're going we to kill it because I come to tell you the Lord has ordained this time. God is in this distance because it's really getting ready to separate the sheep from the wolves. It's getting ready to separate the wheat from the tear. It's getting ready to separate the members from the disciples. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. Because some people are part of churches because it's fun. Huh? And I know I don't know about anybody else's church, but at, on on certain times, at certain times, touring, I'm proud of this. Citadel's a fun place. Yeah. Certain times, I'm proud of it. I thank God that we have a fun atmosphere, that we have a fun community. Yeah. It's fun to be on the choir until I get to the rehearsal. <clears throat> I, I I take credit. I take credit. I take credit. It's it's fun. It's fun to be on the mind team until it's time for ministry to come out. Yeah. Until you decide that you got to be delivered in order to dance on Sunday. Then the fun go out the room. Huh? Huh? It's fun. It's fun to be on the culinary arts ministry and cook all of that food until you realize that you're not clean. And you get rebuked. You mess around and I come in that kitchen and I see you doing nasty stuff. And now it ain't fun no more. Huh? I said sometimes I'm proud of it. But I'm not looking for no fun faith. Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing to me. The problem is a lot of our churches lack discipline. A lot of our parishes lack discipline. And that's why we're not seeing people get healed the way we're begging for them to get healed. Because we're not faithful to God, we're faithful to man. Y'all ain't talking back to me. It's fun. It's fun to be around pastor until you get corrected. Correction makes you a better person. That should be what you around me for. You should be around me to ride in my Mercedes. You should be around me to be a part of this ministry because iron sharp 
divine. Glory to God. Amen. You'll find out who really wants to be your friend when they learn that you really say that you pray outside outside the church altar. That's going to either turn them on or turn them off. Hallelujah. I don't need no help for my flesh. I got enough help already for my flesh. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I got demons and hellhounds on my back. Got to pray daily. God help me. God keep me near the cross. I don't need no help for my flesh. Glory to God. I got enough people posing as sent folks. I don't need no more. I don't need no more fake friends. I don't need no more distractions. I don't need any help for my flesh. The next person you date and the next marriage you have, or I'm gonna just prophesy this to somebody. Your first marriage is gonna be your best marriage. I pray that God will send you somebody that's gonna help your spirit and not your flesh. Good God Almighty on me right tonight. I pray that God is going to send somebody that's serious about their salvation. I pray that God will send somebody that's serious, that are responsible with their worship. I ask the Lord to do this for you. Don't need no more members. Huh? We need you to join the loyalty club. I know you shop here, but are you a loyal member? Huh? God, it's a difference, you know. I, I know you shop here, but do you have a Vic card? Come on. Oh, Jesus. Did you sign up and subscribe to our updates? Do you want to know the latest news on the, I mean, the ministry? I, I know you shop here, but are you willing to follow us online and offline? Come on. God Almighty, I pray to God that we, when we come back together, that the loyal saints will be the ones. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And look, I'm going to say this right here. And I'm talking about folks that's not saved because there are some people that's in the street right now and you're going to be my next deacon. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. It's some, it's some weed men and some women that's been on the pole too long. God going to save you and you're going to come to Citadel and you're going to help me raise this ministry for the Lord. Oh my God. I just want to prophesy that my next spiritual son and my next spiritual daughter are going to come from the most unlikely places. Sometimes street folks, they they be, they more loyal than church folks. Because they realize I didn't been out there. I don't want to turn back. I don't want to go back. I didn't have enough of that. Glory to God. Church folks trying to turn the church house into a club. Street folks come back because they want to remember what salvation and sanctification look like and sound like. Y'all don't be saying nothing to me. God Almighty. Let me end this tonight. I, I, I'm just going to stop right here. I was trying my hardest to get over here into verse 16, 15, and 16. But I'm just going to have to let it rest right there. I hope that you all have heard. I, I know that it's a word from the Lord. I pray that in your hearing, you receive it as such. Oh my goodness. This is the Citadel of Praise coming to you from Greensboro, North Carolina. Amen. Our church and campus ministry is where it's at. Glory to God. I just want to say that for those of you all who have been inboxing, how do I join the church? Just keep coming. Just keep coming. I mean, how could I expect you to join us if you won't even follow us in this time of virtual ministry? So if, if, if you are discerning that I am your pastor, if you have been saved, if you have been rededicated, amen, I'm so grateful to all of my members that are coming back to the fold. I have been praying for you and I've been praying for people that I don't even know. Glory to God. Then I need you to set up shop. Make sure that you go on to our website, citadelofpraise.com. That tells you we were way before the wave. Amen. We are 17 years old when I founded this ministry. And since that time, there have been literally dozens and dozens of Citadel of Praise churches that have popped up. I would may even say more than 100 Citadel of Praise churches that have popped up all across the country. 
but we own citadelofpraise.com because we were amongst the first amen i'll never forget a pastor who came uh he was launching his version of the citadel of praise from a mega church ministry his dad is a mega church pastor and i have so much respect for their ministry but he inboxed one time and said hey man can i get that can will you sell us the rights to your website no 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 i got out here doc i've been out here now i'm in here i'm out here i'm in here i'm out here i'm in here i know mine ain't as big as yours but i'm in here i'm out here glory to god go to our website citadelofpraise.com that's just a little anecdote tell you a little bit about our history amen and sign up for our updates we send out monday mail citadel there's too much information in our monday mail for you not to be trying to click on every one of those flyers and every one of those links there is a power play from yesterday which is a video recap of my sermons from Sunday that we release on Monday afternoon and then every Thursday after Wow Night there is the highlight from Wow Night another video recap of my sermons that we release after Wednesday night on every Thursday don't you know somebody has to sit in front of a computer and dissect the Word of God in order for you to get it in a snack portion the least you can do is to watch it 10 times and the least you could do is to share it to pull it out to push it out I know one of the things that I've been doing because I know I got friends that don't want to sit through a whole sermon so what I've been doing is I've, I've been taking the two links from two power plays or two highlights and I've just been putting them together in one text and I, I've been saying hey do you got five minutes on your lunch hour to hear a word from the Lord if, if you're not thinking about stuff like that then you're not thinking discipleship you're not thinking discipleship I want to say thank you to all of our disciples who keep sending me messages of confirmation from their family and friends they who they have discipled into the ministry virtually and those that are speaking back I literally heard from um, one one sister who had a sister that's not a part of our ministry but she literally said I was I was on my way to book uh, an appointment with a psychiatrist until you sent me that sermon and because you sent me that sermon I don't I don't feel that I need to make that appointment anymore. And I know some of you all are so critical. You, your, your carnal mind starts running right now. Now you need to still go see a car. Look, I'm not in her business. I, that ain't, I didn't have nothing to do with me. This is the testimony that's coming for. So stop trying to run people's lives from your, out of your life. If, if, if she said that did the work, then just give God glory for it. I know I'm giving God glory for it. And every time people send me comments like that and feedback like that, I don't ever steal that thank you. It's God. I don't ever steal that job well done. I all glory to God. And I mean, every, I mean it every time, no matter how much I say it. I literally mean it. It's not me I say. It's the Holy Spirit in me. And so I just want to say thank you to everybody who's not being stingy. Thank you to everybody who keeps bothering your friends and family say you need to hear this you need to hear this because there are people that are literally joining our church in this time of virtual ministry I, i've had so many people say when the city open up i'm coming i'm gonna be right there for now i'm watching you online i feel you brother thank you my sister i cannot wait to embrace you in the physical in the natural but we're already connected in the spirit amen follow us on all all social media and if this is blessing you and you are able so into it so into it how in the world do we have hundreds of viewers a week and only have a few tithers and a few givers we are not a mega church but we are a mega ministry and right now that's all you have <laughs> can nobody have more than 10 folks in their audience in some cases less than that so please walk with me follow me as i follow christ um, interact with us stay connected to us 
Help us to sow. I want to say one thing about our vision to uh, help us in your sowing. Our vision to video campaign. Can I just get y'all to make some noise about our vision to video? Um, uh, to to my to my tech folks behind, are we in a position where we can run the vision to video video um, after after I sign off? Can they view that? Can you throw that in there? Amen. As soon as I finish, just stay right there. If you have not seen what vision to video is, if you have seen it, you already know we need your support. Um, but please just give us a few extra minutes after the broadcast to just learn like what are they really doing and the reason why I'm pushing this is because we got to move on to the next thing and there is a next thing coming all right I just want you to know family I appreciate all your prayers some of you all have encouraged me through some really tough times over this past month I want to say thank you I want to say thank you thank you so much it has meant the world to me that many of you all would take the time. Uh, we've even received things in the mail because people just want to keep pushing me in ministry. And I wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you to my team. Thank you to the team that helps us, the camera crew, the uh, broadcast crew, the, the musicians, the, the, the singers. Amen. All of those who are helping me, writing, writing, and just, it's so much going on around here. It took a virus to reveal vision for some folks. It took a virus to reveal vision. Amen. Glory to God. I love you all tonight. Let me say a prayer so we can seal this worship experience. Amen. God, I thank you and I give you high praise. Hallelujah. You have been faithful to us, to us tonight in the preaching and teaching. Lord, we pray that you receive the worship. God, I thank you for our two-member worship team tonight and how they just allowed the Lord to stretch out in them. And Lord, I pray that you'll continue to anoint them for worship. God, I thank you right now as a vessel. I give you all the credit. If it wasn't for your oil, if you didn't pour that oil in me, I would be a sounding brass, a tinkling cymbal. God, I thank you for all of the support that we have in this studio. And I praise you for every onlooker. I praise you for every supporter. I do have some loyal people in this ministry. And I pray, God, that you will continue to be faithful to them. And that the enemy and every stronghold that they may be dealing with, they'll be delivered from it. God, I thank you for even the faintest supporter, even the faintest of viewers. God, I thank you right now. And I just pray that this word will bring life, that it will nourish us, that it will build us in the most holy faith. You said that faith cometh without hearing. And I want to thank you tonight because my faith has been increased. God, keep us as we so desire to be kept. We're praying for all of those who are first responders and those essential workers in this time of, in this global pandemic, God. We're praying for our leaders. We're praying for our hospital workers. We're praying for even those people that are working with families that are grieving right now. God, I pray right now for strength in every one of those areas and occupations. Those people who are still feeding us, putting themselves at risk those people who are still providing for us those people working overtime and in doing all of that I have to say something about pastors, apostles, evangelists, teachers and prophets Lord that are doing the work as strange as it feels preaching to cameras as strange as it feels talking to laptops and looking at our screens and we don't know who's looking at us and everybody looking on and into us God, I pray that you will safeguard us from all of the, the haters. God, I pray that you will cover us from all of the critics. God, I pray that you'll put us in a safe place with you where you'll twist every lying tongue and you'll bind up the tongue and the mouth of the naysayer. And I pray, God, that you'll love all those people that don't understand us and those people that don't appreciate what ministry is in this hour. And I love you, God. You don't owe us any of this. You don't owe us a single request that we've made. I'm just making it because your word says to do that, to make our requests known. 
but if truth be told, you don't have to do anything. I'm still going to follow you all the way to my dying day. But I believe you're going to come back for me. I just want to believe that I'm going to be here when Jesus cracks the sky. Because I believe you're my soon coming king. And I remember you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Grace, mercy. supporters and loved ones. I am here with the focus group. We have members from audio and visual, members from media and PR. We even have members from the CCM executive board. And we've all come together for one purpose. And that purpose is to ensure that you are able to stay connected. In a time like this, when we are facing a global pandemic, it's important that even though you're out of sight, you can still be at the Citadel holding on to your faith and your focus. And with that being said, we have been working on improving the quality of our live stream. We have also been working on revamping our website so that you guys can log on and have an enjoyable quality experience. We believe that our pastor has a message that's not just for us, but a message that's going to go across the nations. And we want to make sure that when it does, it's decent and it's in order. Absolutely. The quality of all of our media is very essential, but we need a plan to get it done. And right now, I'm going to be talking about the strategy, our strategy so that we can secure the proper improvements to take our ministry to the next level. First, we have to be responsible. The Word of God teaches us that we must be responsible in our worship of giving. And even through these tough times that we're going through, we have to make sure that we take on all the burdens that our ministry will face. And we have to make sure that these burdens don't just fall on our leader or a certain group of people, as it has in the past. Second, we have to make sure that what we're about to invest into is quality. Mm. We as a team have already taken those first steps by consulting with different industry professionals, consulting with other ministries, and watching countless amounts of different reviews to make sure that the products we're about to purchase don't just get the job done, but they do it effectively mm. and efficiently. Mm. And third, we just have to take action. Yes. You know, we have no idea how long the restrictions that have been placed on us by our state and federal government will last. So we just have to make sure that we get it done. We have to make sure that we take on all the burdens, be responsible, and make sure that it happens. And in doing this, we need it as soon as possible. Mm. And this might put us into a lot of debt. But if we know what's going to affect our ministry, yes. we have to know how we can impact it as well. Mm. And if we believe in the power of prosperity, we will prosper in this time, we will elevate in this time, and we will do everything that God has called us to do. So family, I already know what you're thinking. We're talking about money. And that's not an easy conversation to have, but I guarantee you this is something that our focus group has sat with for a while. And we're bringing it to you because of the season our ministry is about to go in. This is an investment that we have to take part in. It's not something that we need, but it's something that we should do if we want to see our ministry grow. Because of the times that we're in right now, we can't rely on the live stream video that we have right now because we have audio and visual problems. And the things that we're investing in right now, as far as the cameras and the new live stream software, they're gonna help us reach even greater capacities of audiences across the world. Mm. So we just ask that you help us in this time, because as we know, the gospel is free, but it costs to bring ministry. Yes, it does. And if you have been following us, you know what type of live stream issues we are talking about. But even through this, we have been able to reach people throughout the nations. And if that's you, we thank you. And we appreciate you for rocking with us. Now, this past Sunday, we had the opportunity to go to our actual studio to live stream our service. And this studio has the equipment that we are looking to purchase. And if you were able to tune in with us on Sunday, you saw some major live stream improvements. Now, I could go on and on about how good Sunday went, but it's something that can't be explained. It has to be experience, at least a virtual experience. So Citadel and friends, we care about you and the experience that you are having here at the Citadel. And this is why we're doing this, so that you, yes you, can stay connected. Well, 
You've seen the budget, you've heard our why, and you know the vision. So join us in this investment by going to citadelofpraise.com and clicking Give Now. You can also go to Citadel GSO on Cash App and make sure you label it Vision to Video. Our need is $10,000 and we believe we can meet this need within 30 days starting right now. The equipment is on the way. Let's get it done, Citadel. So go to our website and check for the Vision to Video icon to make your pledge, sow your seed, and receive updates. And each Sunday, we'll be giving you this update on where we stand with our goal during our 3 p.m. broadcast. And we thank you for helping us to mobilize our vision to video. Focus Group, we're out. <laughs>